So if you're ready for the word, can I ask you to bow your hearts with me as I say a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor and adoration. Thank you for the opportunity to hear your word this morning. Thank you, Father God, for this service. We hand it over to you. We say take full and absolute control. Thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. Let your word come with exactitude, accuracy, accuracy and precision. Let your word meet us as the, at the point of our needs and let it take us even to the realm where you want us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive a fresh anointing that makes the teaching and the preaching of your word easy in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' exalted name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. The title of my message this morning is Prepare for Exploits. <laughs> Prepare for Exploits. Someone type in your chat for me. Prepare for ex Exploits. Um, you know, you would have uh, heard me, you know, over the past uh, few weeks, talk about the fact that by the grace of God, we shall be going into uh, in-person service very soon. Hallelujah. We shall be going back into in-person service very soon. And um, a few days ago, I was uh, praying and uh, speaking to God regarding this broadcast, actually. Uh, Father, what would you have me you know, preach? I was asking the Holy Ghost and communing with him. What would you have, have me preach? And uh, just like as soon as I asked that question, it was dropped in my spirit, prepare for greatness. Prepare for greatness, the sound of abundance of rain. Prepare for greatness, the sound of abundance of rain. And I knew that, wow, God has something great ahead of us. God has something great ahead of us. So I've decided by the grace of God, to title this message, Prepare for Exploits. Glory to God. Because I believe one of the other words, you know, to explain or to, to, to describe uh, greatness is actually exploits. Glory to God. So if you've got your Bibles with you, can you open with me, please, to the book of First Kings chapter 18, and I'll read verse 41, and also Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. In Fox Kings chapter 18, verse 41, the Bible says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, and for there is uh, the sound of abundance of rain. Glory to God. And Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, the Bible says, Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out uh, Ex great exploits. Can you type in your chat for me this morning? I have been born for exploit. I have been born for exploit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that in the next phase of um, Illumination Church, as we prepare to go into in-person service, the Lord and the God of heaven is preparing us even for a time of exploit, is preparing us for a season of greatness. Somebody say amen if you believe that. If you believe one more time, type amen in your chat for me. You know, and when we talk about exploit, what do we mean? When we talk about exploit, we mean a striking or notable deed. We mean that we're about to do something that is striking, something that is notable. We mean a feat. Exploits talks about spirited or heroic uh, act. Uh, it means extraordinary achievement. It means supernatural um, accomplishment. Glory to God. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, for someone listening to me this morning, this is your season of extraordinary achievements. Uh, this is the time to accomplish uh, supernatural, you know, um, feats uh, in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. If you believe it one more time, say amen. You know, when the Spirit of God dropped that title or that word in my heart, prepare for greatness, he followed it up by saying, 
the sound of abundance of rain, or I hear the sound of abundance of rain. So as soon as that dropped in my spirit, I knew where that is, you know, what he was talking about in the sense that that is the story of uh, Elijah when he prophesied. And he, you know, as um, some Bible scholar will say that Elijah shut the heavens and he put the keys in his pocket. Then after about three years, he came back up and he declared that there will be rain. And he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And we see that story in the book of First Fox, Kings chapter 18, verses 36 to 46. First Kings chapter 18, verses 36 to 46. I was doing a study of that scripture and I realized that, oh, I could see clearly some requirements for exploits or requirements for revival, requirements for exploits, the requirements or ingredients for exploits. And it's quite interesting. Then all of a sudden, it just occurred to me that there is um, a parallel of those requirements as well in the New Testament, actually in the book of Acts chapter 2. So today, by the grace of God, our study will be from 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 36 to 46, and then we will look at Acts chapter 2, verse, uh, from verse 1 to actually 46, and we will be drawing the parallel, you know, with the principles that we will be learning this morning. Glory to God. So if you're ready, um, uh, you can open your Bibles with me to 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 36 to 46, but if not... Uh, you know, if you don't have your Bible near you, it's, there's no problem on your screen. Just keep looking at your screen and the scriptures will be projected on your screen as well. And please let me give this warning. We have a lot of things that we will, a lot of scriptures that we'll be examining this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. So just be, be aware of that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As I said earlier on, all the, you know, scriptures, the, the, the principles especially when it comes to the requirements or the ingredients for um, exploits, all the principles that I saw in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, they also, you know, were repeated, you know, in um, Acts chapter 2, glory to God. So talking about the requirement for exploits, the first requirement as I was uh, studying is uh, the timing Timing, I realized the importance of timing when it comes to exploit. Glory to God. When God is about to do exploit or when the season of exploit is come, there is actually, it's actually, it comes in a season. It comes as a season. It comes in its own time. Amen. So your timing matters. Timing matters when it comes to exploit. Not every day will be days of exploit, but when it is time for exploit, you, the Holy Spirit will make you aware of it. You will know it in your spirit. Glory to God. So your timing matters. Perhaps you're there and you feel that, oh, things are not happening as I desire them to be. Consider the time. Wait, is it the time for my exploit yet? Glory to God. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36, especially 36a, the Bible says, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of, of the evening sacrifice. This is what happened right from verse 1. After, you know, in chapter 17, Elijah had uh, shut the heavens and, as I said, put the keys in his pocket and he went away. Three years later, he came back on the scene and he said, go get me Ahab. And uh, because the land had been given to idolatry, the people had been worshipping Baal and about 400 prophets of Baal had been, um, had been raised. So he now said he had an encounter. He had a confrontation with these prophets. He said, okay, you guys get your, you know, get a bull or a bullock and let's see, you know, and, and, and call on your God, Baal, to, 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 send, to send them fire. And then I will do the same. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. So there was that confrontation on the mountain. And the prophets of Baal tried to call them fire and there was no fire. Elijah mocked them and things like that. But eventually, 
when it was when the guys had tried all day long and they had failed, it was now time for Elijah. And see what the Bible says in verse 36. It says, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. So there was a time. There was a time for the exploits, for Elijah's exploits to be done. So it was at a time, at a certain time. And when that time came, he didn't miss it. I pray for someone this morning that you will not miss your time of exploit in the name of Jesus. Your time of greatness, you will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1, we see something similar. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. It had fully come. It didn't come partially. It's not when the day of Pentecost was partially come or had partially come. It said, had fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. I pray for someone today that your day of exploit had fully come today. It has fully come. Finally, in the name of Jesus, if you believe that, say amen. Your day of exploit has come this morning. If you believe that, shout amen. Type once again in your chat for me. Say, today is my day of exploit. Today is my day of exploit in the mighty name of Jesus. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come, this was the day the Holy Spirit was released and upon the church and everybody started speaking in tongues. It was the day of power. Definitely that was a day of exploit. Glory to God. But that it was a certain day, just as the time of exploit for Elijah had a specific time. So also the day of Pentecost had a specific day. And I pray for you that today is the day of your exploit. This time is your time of exploit for you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe it one more time, say amen. In the book of Psalms 102 verse 13, the Bible says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. So there is a set time of favor. There is a set time of exploit. There is a set time of greatness. And he said, You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. This is your set time of favor. This is your set time of exploit. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. If you believe it one more time, say amen. And I dare declare over Illumination Church, this is your set time of exploit. This is your set time of favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen one more time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the first ingredient for exploit is the timing. Number two is prayer for you to be able to experience exploit. In the kingdom, you need to pray. You need to be given to prayer. In verse 36b to 37 of First uh, Kings chapter 17, the Bible says, you know, after we've seen the, 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 the time of sacrifice being the evening, the Bible says, then Elijah said, so Elijah started speaking to God because he needed to do exploit. He started speaking to God. He said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. I have done it at your word, at your command, not my own, but yours. Verse 37, he now said, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have Turn their hearts back to you again. Glory to God. So Elijah prayed. Hallelujah. So he prayed. And then we see in um, Acts chapter 2 as well that there was prayer. 
There was prayer. The Bible says that they were all together in one accord. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, the people were together in one accord. Someone will ask, we will, will ask so what do you mean? They were together in one accord. Yeah, what does that mean? You will see later. I will be explaining it later. But you see, when they were together in one accord, they weren't just there looking at each other's faces. They were there in one accord, in oneness, in unity, worshiping, praising, praying, and studying the word. Glory to God. They were worshiping, praising, praying, and studying the word. So prayer preceded the exploits. Glory to God. Prayer preceded the exploit. So eventually when it was time, the power of God came down. Hallelujah. And the third ingredient for exploit is the signs and wonders. For you to be able to experience great exploit, actually for you to be say, able to say, oh, we have seen exploits here, you need to experience signs and wonders as well. That is manifestation. Because as you are praying, you are trusting God for something, you are putting it before God. And the manifestation of that prayer is uh, the exploit. Glory to God. That is signs and wonders. In verse 38 of 1 Kings chapter 18, the Bible says, then, because Elijah was praying for fire, the Bible says, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust. And it lit up the water that was in the trench. Glory to God. So Elijah prayed for fire and fire fell. Glory to God. He prayed for fire and fire fell. That was a sign. That was a wonder. The fire was not the end on its own. The fire was a means to an end. You see that very soon. So when we're talking about exploit, the exploit itself is not the end. It's a means to an end. Glory to God. The exploit is not about, it's not for you to begin to, you know, to brag or something. It's just to show how great and how big your God is. Glory to God. He said, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. And the God of heaven showed up answering by fire. And with that, it was established that indeed he is the true and living God. Glory to God. And also in the book of Second uh, of, of Acts chapter 2 from verse 2, we see the Bible says that after they were together in one accord, the Bible says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I heard the sound of abundance of rain. There came a sound of from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the old house where they were sitting. So the, 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 the wind filled the old house where they were sitting. Then there appeared on them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. So each person carried individual fire. During the time of Elijah, the fire came and it consumed the sacrifice, the dead sacrifice, the bullock. But this time around, in Acts chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, when that fire came, it rested on them and it consumed each person. There were 120 of them in that room. And the fire came upon each and every one of them. They were consumed by the fire and they didn't die. They were alive, a living sacrifice. The Bible says, present your body, present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. This age, people of God, we are meant to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. And I know that as you do, I know that as you present yourself to God, the God of heaven, as a living sacrifice, uh, he will fill you with his fire in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe that one more time, type amen in your chat for me. Glory to God. This uh, is the day of his power. This is the day of fire. This is the time of exploit. This is the time to release yourself and take uh, everything that God has in stock for you in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And the fourth ingredient, when the signs and wonders come, 
What happens? You see revival. Glory to God. Revival. There is a response from the people. There is a response. There is a positive response. There is repentance. In verse 39 of 1 Kings chapter 18, and also Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 41. In Acts chapter, you know, um, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 39, the Bible says, Now, when the people saw it, when they saw that the fire of God had fallen and it had consumed the bullock, the Bible says they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. People repented and they started shouting, The Lord is God. They started shouting, they started worshiping, they acknowledged God, they repented. These were guys who had been drawn to idolatry for so many years. Now, when they saw signs and wonders, they believed that. No wonder Jesus said, except they see signs and wonders, uh, they will not believe. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, in this season that we are at, in this season that we have entered at Illumination Church and in your personal life, you will see signs and wonders. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will see signs and wonders. It will be easy for people who, is, who, who observe your life uh, to agree that indeed the Lord is God in your life in Jesus' name. They will come to you. Men, women, adults, young people, they'll come to you to come and ask you about your God because of the great hand of God upon your life and because of signs and wonders that they will see in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe it one more time, say amen. Glory to God. And in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 37, the Bible says, now when they heard this, because when the fire fell, Apostle Peter rose up and he started preaching. And he preached. After he finished preaching, the Bible says they were pricked to the heart. And the Bible says when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Glory to God. These were people who set out initially to mock them. But immediately, once they heard the word uh, preached under a mat mighty anointing, they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? I pray for Illumination Church uh, that as we go into our in-person service, as we step out in Gravesend, uh, men will come to us. Women will come. Children will come. Adults will come. Asking men and brethren, what shall we do? We want to know Christ. Tell us a bit more about your God because of the signs, because of the wonders of God that they will see. I speak revival upon that land in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. If you believe it one more time, say amen. In Psalms 110 verse 3, the Bible says your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, you, 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 you have the dew of your youth. Your people shall be volunteers. The King James Version says your people will be willing in the day of your power. I believe that this is the season where people will not be cajoled. They will not be cajoled. They will, you will not need to run after them before they come over and serve God and worship God in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. So what happens? It is the power of God that makes uh, you know, the fire of the people to come alive. So, And I pray, everyone watching me, everyone under the sound of my voice, uh, the fire of God will come, the power of God will come upon you and it will ignite. Uh, it will ignite your passion. It will ignite your fire for the things of the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe it one more time, say amen. And as the people, as there was revival, as the people were asking, what should we do? We say, restitution. We see people straightening their ways. Hallelujah. Because they had seen the grace of God. You see, there is this um, belief among some believers that, oh, for you to experience the power of God, you need to straighten your ways. You need to um, do these. There are seven things you need to do. Your life needs to be in a certain way before God can visit you. But you see God doing the Converse air. Yeah. God visited them before they straightened their ways. 
Hallelujah. The same thing in the book of Acts. God visited them and then because of the visitation, because of the power that the people saw, they came over to God. So that is the grace of God in manifestation. Glory to God. They started doing restitution in Acts, in, in, in 1 Kings chapter 18 after they had seen the power and the fire of God. The same thing. In the book of Acts, they saw the power of God in manifestation and people came to ask, what can we do? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That is what someone said that here. You know, if it is not new, it is no news. Glory to God. Without, um, um, without result, you have no respect. People saw the result before they respected them. And in Jesus' name, I pray for Illumination Church, that this is our season of result, uh, which will bring great respect uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. For you listening to me at home as well, you will experience result in every area of your life, and your life will, will, will attract uh, great respect uh, in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. Uh, if you believe it one more time as well, say amen. So they saw the power of God, and they started restituting. Glory to God. They took all the the prophets of Baal, and they executed them. They put strange things away from them. Glory to God, because they saw the power of God. And the next ingredient, you know, for exploit is restoration. When you are, you, you know, you, 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 the revival starts, uh, you begin to see restoration in your life. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41, the Bible says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up and eat, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. I like the sound of that. There is the sound of abundance of rain. Go up and eat. Bear in mind, for the past three years or three and a half years, they've not had rain. So things had been bad. They had been farming. And at that point, Elijah declared, there is a sound of abundance of rain. So begin to rejoice. Go and eat. It's not by might. It's not by power. But by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts, you go and eat. You don't need to worry. There is a sound of abundance of rain. There is a restoration coming your way. So go and rejoice. And I declare over someone this morning, there is a sound of abundance of rain coming your way. So go and eat. Go and relax. Begin to rejoice and give God praise. If you believe God, if you believe that, say amen. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 39, the Bible says, For the promise, after those guys had asked what can we do? Men and brethren, what can we do? Peter, Apostle Peter now told them that this that you have seen is the promise of God that had been promised since time immemorial. It has now come to you. He said, for the promise is to you and to your children. Don't be alarmed. This is the restoration. This is the manifestation of what God had promised you. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there you have it. Go and eat, there is a sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I see restoration coming your way. I sp speak to someone as well. I speak that upon your life, that every dryness, the sound of abundance of rain will come. You'll not just hear the sound, you'll see the rain in Jesus' name. Every dryness becomes a wet ground for you in Jesus' name. Every hardship, I command a turn around in the name of Jesus. Everything that has been lost is restored to you in the precious name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. So this revival, this exploit started, and it started with a prayer. Glory to God. However, in studying, I then discovered as well that a revival that is bathed by prayer must be sustained by prayer for anything to be able to, so, to survive. Whatever gave birth to it must be able to sustain it. Hallelujah. Man was made. You know, God created man from the source, you know, from the dust of the earth. That's why we need the earth for our sustenance. We rely on the earth for our sustenance. If prayer gave back to your revival, you need prayer to be able to sustain it. And this is what we see 
in verse 42 of um, 1 Kings chapter 18. Even though the exploit started with prayer, but what happened? After Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain, the Bible says he now went and he started praying. He started praying in verse 42. He started it off with prayer, but he continued in prayer. In verse 42 of 1 Kings chapter 18, the Bible says, So Ahab went up to eat and drink. Bear in mind, he has given Ahab the instruction to go and eat and drink. So the guy just went off to eat. However, Elijah went up to the top of Camel, that is Mount Camel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. What was he doing? He was praying. He was praying because he knew this revival had started. For me to be able to sustain it, this revival had started because I prayed. For me to be able to sustain it, I need to pray. I've told him, I've released the word of God that there is a water coming. So I need to ensure that this water comes. And he went to pray and speak to God about it much more. He put his face between his knees. What does this mean? It means he was focused, he was concentrated so as to prevent distractions. And we see this as well in Acts chapter 2 verse 42. The Bible says, and they continued. Bear in mind, it was prayer that started the revival, the day of Pentecost or the Pentecostal revival in um, Acts chapter 42. But see, in Acts chapter 2, rather, from verse 1, the Bible says the day of Pentecost, when it came, they were all together in one accord in one place. See what now happened in verse 42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Glory to God. They started... But what they started in verse 1 and 2, what happened? How did they continue it? They continued doing the same thing. You cannot continue what you've not started. Hey, Amen. Did you see? So when I said that just being in one accord was not just looking at each other's faces. No, what they were doing was they were continuing in the apostles' doctrine. So in chapter, in verse 1, the apostles were teaching them. When you talk about doctrines, you are talking about teachings. So the apostles were teaching them. They were having fellowship, walking in love together, then breaking bread, having communion, having communion and eating together, of course. And uh, the Bible says in prayers. So they were praying. And this is how they sustained the revival. In the same vein that Elijah continued praying to sustain the revival that had happened. So I want to encourage someone out there this morning. Whatsoever the God of heaven will start or had started in your life. If it started with prayer, you have to sustain it with prayer. If it started with sacrifice, you sustain it with sacrifice. If it started with praise, you sustain it with praise. Glory to God. And most times it still started with the combination of everything. So don't stop doing good. The Bible says, be not weary in well-doing, for you will receive, you will reap, if you do not faint. So don't be weary. You want it to continue? You have to continue doing the needful. Glory to God. In James chapter 5, verse 16, the B part, and I'll be reading the Amplified um, Classic Edition of the Bible. Let me read the whole um, verse to you. The Bible says, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your sleeps, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Now listen to the B part. It says, for the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its workings. The earnest, Heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its workings. And verse 17 now told us that Elijah was a man of like passion like us. He prayed that it will not rain for the space of three and a half years and it did not rain. And he prayed again that it would rain and the, the Lord sent down rain. 
So this scripture is actually referring, referencing Elijah's persistence. So the fact that you prayed and God started doing something in your life doesn't mean an end has come to your prayer time. No, 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 no. Whatever you started with prayer, you must sustain with prayer. If you believe that, say amen. So we see the persistence. We see persistence in verses 43 and 44 of First Kings chapter 18. We see Elijah, he asked his servants to go and check for a sign of the rain. And the guy was going back and forth and saying, there is no sign, there is no sign. But he told him, keep going, keep going, keep going. And on the seventh, you know, the, at the seventh time, the guy said, I could see a cloud from afar, like the, you know, the, 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 the hand of a man. And then Elijah realized, yeah, this is it. I've gotten my breakthrough. And the rain fell. Glory to God. The dryness and the drought stopped. Glory to God. So once again, I heard the sound of abundance of rain in Gravesend and in the life of everyone connected to us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the Bible says they continued in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, communion, and prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And finally, this morning, after Elijah saw the sign of the rain, when he saw the cloud, the Bible says in verse 48, it says, Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. At this point, before then, Elijah told Ahab, he said, you better get in your, in your cab, get in your chariot and, and begin to go and begin to run so that you don't get stopped by the, by the rain. And as soon as uh, Ahab heard, Ahab got in his chariot and he started, you know, riding profusely, furiously. However, the Bible says the hand of God came upon Elijah and he gathered his, uh, his, his clothes and he started running. He started running, and we understand that he actually outran the king's chariot. So what happened here? I believe when you experience a revival like this, an exploit like this, there's always a residual anointing. You know, we serve a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask or think. The Bible says, according to his power that works in us. It was just God, in my own opinion, trying to show off the act because... You know, the main exploit was, okay, he sent fire, he had brought revival, which is what really mattered in the kingdom. But I just thought, you know what, Elijah, you too will not, you'll not, you'll not go empty-handed. Take this anointing, the anointing for speed and strength. And that anointing came upon Elijah. I speak upon someone this morning. I prophesy upon you that today receive the anointing for speed in the name of Jesus because you have connected to these uh, you know, this, this service you've connected to this broadcast, receive the anointing for speed in the mighty name of Jesus. That speed, that anointing for speed came upon Elijah and he was able to outrun someone who had a chariot. It is believed that, Eli that Ahab's chariot was being drawn by four horses. So it was a four horse power vehicle, so to speak. And he outran them because of the anointing. I pray that the anointing of God coming upon you will take you further, will shoot you further in the name of Jesus. You will forcefully go forward in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe it one more time, say amen. Glory to God. We serve a God who gives extra. And in this season, you will experience the extraordinary hand of God upon your life in the precious name of Jesus. If you believe that one more time, say amen. Glory to God. Please bow your hearts with me this morning as we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to begin to speak to God. I want you to begin to speak to God if there is any area of your life. Anyway, this word has touched you. Just begin to speak to 